fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whisperers, backbiters, haters of Yahweh, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing that judgment of Yahweh, they, who knowing the judgment of Yahweh, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but consent with them that do them. Romans, the first chapter. Choir. Encourage my soul, and let us journey on. Though the night is dark, and I am far from home. Everybody say, thanks be to El, the morning light appears. Oh, don't you know that the storm is passing over? The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Encourage my soul and let us journey on. Though the night is dark and I am far from home. Everybody say, Thanks be to hell, the morning light appears. Oh, don't you know that the storm is passing over? The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
the storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Encourage my soul and let us journey on. Though the night is dark, though the night is dark, oh, and, and I am far from home, so far from home. Thanks be to El, the morning light of peace. Oh, don't you know that the storm is passing over? The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. 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 The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The storm is passing over, hallelujah. The storm is passing over, the storm is passing over, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The storm is passing over. Oh, yes, it is. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Yahshua is already here. Can't you feel his presence? He's already here. All you got to do is open up your heart, for he is already here. I wonder, yeah. did you ask him to come along with you to fill you with his spirit? alive brand new and that's why i can thank him and that's why we say that yashua's already here oh yashua yashua is is the man is already here and can't you feel his presence can't you feel his presence oh, he's already here and all you gotta do all you got is to do open up is your open heart. up your heart, for he is already here. Yahshua is already here. Can't you feel his presence? He's already here. All you got to do is open up your heart. For he is already here. I wonder, did you pray a prayer of thanks today? Because Yahshua has shown you in each and every way. And that's how I can thank him. And that's why we say that Yahshua is already here. Oh, Yahshua, Yahshua is, is, the man is already here. here. Can't you feel his presence? Can't, Can't you feel his presence? presence? He's already here. And all you got to do, all you, you got, got to do, do is, a open, is up open up your heart, for he is already here. Oh, Yahshua, Yahshua is, is, 
the man is already here. Can't you feel his presence? Can't you feel his presence? He's already here. All you gotta do, all you got is to uh, do open up your is heart. open up your heart, for he is already here. I wonder, did you ask him? He'll, He'll come, come along with you. He'll fill you with his spirit, alive, brand new. And that's why I can thank him. And that's why we say that Yahshua is already here. Oh, Yahshua. Yahshua is, is. The man is already here. Can't you feel his presence? Can't you feel his presence? Oh, He's already here. All you got to do. All you, you got, got to is do is open up is your heart. Open up your heart for he is already here. Whoa, Yahshua. Yahshua is, is the man is already here. Can't you feel his presence? Can't you feel his presence? Whoa, he's already here. All you gotta do. All, All you, you got, got to is do uh, open up is your heart. open up your heart for he is already here. Whoa, Yahshua. Yahshua is, is the man is already here. Can't you feel his presence? Can't you feel his presence? Whoa, he's already here. All you got to do. All you got is to uh, do open up your is heart. open up your heart. For he is already here. Yahshua is already here. Can't you feel his presence? He's already here. All you got to do is open up your heart. For he is already Thank you, choir. Our first speaker for this evening will be Dr. Janice Welsh. Good evening, class. Um, <clears throat> can I put it down just a little? Yeah. <laughs> it's like going in my ear. Well, it is a great pleasure to be in class and to be back in the land of the living. Um, <clears throat> the scripture reading today, uh, Romans the first chapter, of course you couldn't have known this, but I was just talking to somebody about um, about that one verse in uh, Romans. So can you get for me Romans 1 and 16? Um, and we talk, talk about this is a school and it's not a church. And in a school you do come to learn something, but to learn something for sure about your Heavenly Father. Many people have been taught or have been given the information from this divine vision and revelation, 
but um, they've just kind of tossed it aside. It's almost like somebody giving you a great gift and you say, eh, I don't want that. I think I'll just dig through the garbage. No, this is a great gift that was given from the creator himself. And he meant what he said and he said what he meant. And he said, Dr. now Dr. Kinley had this divine vision. We're talking a divine vision. That means that this vision came from the creator himself. This was not a, a, something that a man decided that he was gonna sit down and, and make up a story. It didn't come that way. Dr. Kinley was given a, a vision, as the moderator said, and he was told, you know, he was asked, what is he gonna do with this, with this vision? He didn't know, but it ended up him saying that he was gonna teach your will, um, I think your will and your way, teach your, thank you, teach your people, your people, your will and your way. Well, not everybody is Yahweh's people or his children or his offspring or even have a heart to accept or understand what it is he has given us. So let's get Romans 1 and um, 16. <clears throat> Romans 1 and 16. Mm hmm for I am not ashamed of the gospel no. of the Messiah. He says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. Is that what it says? Of the gospel of the Messiah. Of the gospel of the Messiah. And Messiah means the anointed. Okay, read. For it is the power of Yahweh unto righteousness. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and let you read it through That's first, and then I'll stop you because okay. there's no sense breaking the train of thought. Go ahead. 1 and 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. For it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation. Mm -hmm. To everyone that believeth. To the Jew first. Mm -hmm. And then also the Greek. Right. Okay, now let's start it over again. Romans 1 and 16. Mm -hmm. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah. I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah. Now, we first heard about shame with Adam and Eve when they ate that fruit in the garden that they were not supposed to touch or they were not supposed to eat. But once they ate it, they became ashamed. And you think about it, here they are, footloose and fancy free, running through the garden, eating the fruit, happy, and then they ate that fruit and all of a sudden they were ashamed and they weren't ashamed of what they, it didn't seem like they were ashamed of what they did. They ate the fruit. They were ashamed because they were naked. Now why, you know, they were ashamed of their physical bodies and they began to cover up. So that lets you know that right away they were directed their, their state of mind had completely changed. They were no longer in the spirit where they had no thought of their physical bodies, but all of a sudden they ate the fruit and then they wanted to cover up their, their and they were made, he was made in the image and likeness of Yahweh Elohim, Adam was, or man was made in the image and likeness of our creator. And then you wanna cover that up? Go ahead and read. <clears throat> For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, mm -hmm. for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation. What? It is the power of Yahweh unto salvation. It is the power, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it has the power to save you, save you from, save your soul from eternal damnation. Okay, read. For it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation mm -hmm. to everyone that believeth. Now, it's not the power to save just any old body. So if people say, well, everybody has the Holy Spirit, not everybody is saved. It's just not happening. It's only to those that believe. Now, he, he, he readily makes it available to anybody to receive this great gospel. But you got to accept it and you got to believe it. So what is it that you're going to believe? You're going to believe in the power, the power of Yahshua, the Messiah, to save your soul. Okay, read. 
For it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation mm -hmm. to everyone that believeth. Mm -hmm. To the Jew first mm -hmm. and also to the Greek. All right, to the Jew first and then also to the Greek. And I don't know if it's on this. Yeah, sure it is. Um, the Holy Spirit was first poured out on the Jews first. And then seven years later, it was poured out on the Gentiles. So it came to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. Okay, go ahead and read. 1 and 17. Huh. For therein <laughs> is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed right. from faith to faith. The righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith, faith to faith. Read. As it is written. Mm-hmm. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Is that all the 17? Yep. I just had to get that off my chest. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like, yeah. I, think, I feel like I've been, uh, I've been through, you know how in the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> and my little girl that clicked her heels three times. She was in that area with the Wicked Witch and the Wicked Witch was trying to kill her. That's, that's how I feel, that I was in, in that situation. And I don't wanna put a lot of time and effort on nonsense, but please understand that what you, are, what you have been given is precious and your prayer is that Yahshua keep you and that you hold on to this and that you do not be deceived. Now, one of the things we talk about in this class is that the name, that the name of the creator, you know, back in the day, we say, oh, you guys harp on the name. You just keep talking about that name. Well, there was a good reason why. And um, I, I, I re just remember hearing something, you know, keep coming to class. What you're learning now, you're going to need it. You're going to need it. So you're going to, oh, D Dr. Kinley said, yeah, you learn because you are going to need this. And I'm thinking, and you know, come on now, y'all know y'all was like, every time somebody got up on the floor, they started going through the, the story of Moses. We called it the story of Moses, but it was Yahshua's story. They were telling you about Yahshua. But one of the first things we, we learn about is his name of Yahweh. Now, we talk about Yah, that Y-A-H, as being the masculine portion of the name and way being the feminine portion of the name. That means, or that shows forth, he is the father and the mother of us all. Now, um, go to Genesis and get where Adam talks about leaving his father and mother and cleaving unto his bride. So, we have the name of Yahweh. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, or Yahweh, Elohim says. Oh, Elohim. What is it? Two and 24 in King James? Okay. Was well, it the same in the holy name? Because in two, Gen Genesis, and sometimes they're different. Genesis 2 and 24. Okay. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife. Now, he's talking about Adam here. And he says, therefore shall a man leave father and mother and cleave unto his bride. The only father and mother that was there at that time was Yahweh, being the father and the mother of us all. And Adam was made from the dust of the ground. And then Yahweh stepped into Adam's body and began to breathe. <gasps> Now, it is through that name of Yahweh that all life exists. You, there's no way around it. You know, you breathe in. The trees, I mean, they even, the trees let off 
oxygen and take in as I think it's our carbon carbon dioxide is what we breathe out. So there's a relationship, a sim, symbolic, re, symbiotic. Oh, symbiotic. There's relationship, okay, between the trees or the plants and the man. <laughs> so there's a, a back and forth. They, we give the trees what they need, the carbon dioxide, and then they give off the oxygen for us to breathe. The trees are symbolic of the angelic creation. And then to show you that, even back here with Adam, there was an angel here named Michael. And Michael's the one who um, guarded the way so they could not go back into the garden. Gabriel was the one who came to Mary, Miriam and told her that she was going to have a son and that his name would be Yahshua. So there's a relationship between the angelic creation and the physical creation, and that's shown in our on earth with the plants, with the trees and us, and how we, we need each other <laughs> for survival. So we have this name of Yahweh. <clears throat> He who exists or causes to exist. Now, Yahweh in his pure spirit state is symbolized on this chart, as they say, symbolized as a cloud. And the reason he's symbolized as this cloud is because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. So if you wanted to just go and give Yahweh a nice big hug, that would be like hugging a cloud. You, you can't, he's incomprehensible. He's inscrutable in this state and condition. So what Yahweh did is he, 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 took, he took on, he took on the shape and form as Elohim. Now these are things that we learned in the beginning that we were just learning, but they have very powerful significance especially now, do not lose sight of what we were taught in the beginning. It is vitally important for your, your eternal life. So he took on this shape and form. So right within himself, it's, I don't know, don't know where I read that from, but as a baby, you see the, the egg and the sperm. It's like a cloud. It's no particular or descriptive shape and form at that point. But the baby begins to take on a shape and form right within the mother. Just as, and it's point, everything is pointing back to our creator. Simple things. So Yahweh Elohim took on the shape and form of a man. <clears throat> and Elohim is the archetype or the original original, the one and only truly original pattern of the whole entire universe. So he takes on the shape and form of a man. And now how do we know that he took on the shape and form of a man? Get for me Exodus, um, Exodus 24, 9. Exodus 24, 9. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> then went up Moses. All right. And here we go back to the story of Moses. Then went up Moses, and Moses was told to come up here on this mountain. Read. Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. See this? Then went up Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. Read. And 70 of the elders of Israel. And you see the picture here? There's 70 elders. And I even think that when this was painted, she actually painted 70 of them. I think you can count 70 elders on this chart. Read. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. Now look, they saw the Elohim of Israel. Read. And they saw the Elohim of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. As it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone. Read. And as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. As it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. Read. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, mm -hmm. he laid not his hand. Now, 
he had a body, he had hands, he had feet. This was in the shape of a man, just as Adam was made in the image and likeness of Yahweh Elohim as a man. He had, specifically, he had feet, he had a body, he had hands. Now, when the 70 elders in Nadab and Abihu saw Yahweh Elohim up here in this form, they saw him. So they had seen the creator of the universe in this vision. But what did they do? They came down and made a calf, a golden calf that has hooves, that's not a man, a tail, <laughs> and although it does have a body, the body is not standing upright, this body is bent over. And Yahweh Elohim is upright. He's a spiritual being right here. So they saw Yahweh Elohim, but evidently they did not understand what it was they saw. Here you had Moses. He went all the way up to the top of the mountain. And Yahweh basically told him, Moses, come up there and be alone and by yourself. So go get um, down a little farther where it talks about Joshua going up with him. If you can find that for me right quick. I think it's in the same spot. 13. And Moses rose up in his ministry, That's it. Joshua. Now, <clears throat> you can go in the scriptures. We got pictures painted up here on this chart. But you can also go in the scriptures to find where this story is. And it's a good idea to read it for yourself. I can't emphasize that enough. For yourself. So... Here, go ahead and finish reading that for me, please. And Moses rose up. Now Moses rose up. Now, where is he rising up for? He was already here on the mount, and he rose up. Go ahead. And Moses rose up, and his minister, Joshua. And his minister, Joshua. Now, if you read before that, if they got a, the invitation of who was supposed to be on this mountain, it was... Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. There's nowhere that you read that Joshua was supposed to be up there on that mountain. In fact, if an animal touched the mount, they were to be killed. If a man touched this mountain, they were to be killed. So how come he's still alive and up here on this mountain? That's the big mystery that, Yah that Yahweh gave when he gave this vision to Dr. Kinley, that he revealed to us who this man was on this mount. It was Joshua. He was called Joshua in your book, but there was no J. He was truly Joshua. He set it up back here with Moses, and he shut it up down here as Joshua the Messiah. So here, and I, I just love the example too, if I invite you, to my house for the party. And I say, okay, I need y'all. I, 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 hey, Aaron, Nadab and Abayu, y'all can come. 70 elders, I want y'all to come too. And of course, Moses definitely was supposed to be up here on this mount. So if I say, Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abayu, <laughs> 70 of the elders, y'all can come to my party. Well, of course, the person that invited him on this mountain is going to be there. The, the invitee or the invitor, which would be Yahshua the Messiah. So Yahshua told Moses to invite these people up here on this mountain because otherwise he should be dead. There's no way that there's going to be Yahshua. And plus, he was a young man. Who told the young man to come when you got these other people and the elders? So here you have, just trying to help understand 
how phenomenal this vision is that Yahweh gave to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley. And yes, I, I, I'm, I, I feel okay to say Dr. Kinley, there'd be no way that I would take that out of my vocabulary as much as I would take Moses out of my vocabulary or John out of my vocabulary. But Dr. Kinley was given a vision. He was chosen to, to get this vision. So it was him that explained to us who this really was. Who, who was this man up here on a mount when he should have been killed? It was the one who invited everybody else up there. He was the one that was down here in the land of Egypt. You see here, Yahshua, Aaron, and Moses in this tent down in Egypt. So he was a very, I want to say, important figure back here because he, actually, he's the one who gave Moses the, the vision at the burning bush. This was not just some character in the no, Bible. No. This was the creator come down in a physical body. And you know what? I had never even thought of that in my own mind that our creator could be back here with Moses and then also come in and fulfill that they would be the same. They're not the same person, but the same spirit that he could take on a body and have these children of Israel saved from Pharaoh because Pharaoh was a tough cookie. Okay. He controlled a whole lot of the world at that time, but Yahweh took down the tough cookie. All right. So anyway, when they after they they were delivered out of the land of Egypt, here you have Yahshua here on this mount. And he's the one who takes Moses to the top of the mountain. And then he disrobes, so to speak. <laughs> the way you know is you look down here in the fulfillment. And Yahshua fulfilled its you can look at what happened back here and confirm it by what happened over here. So he took off that physical body as Yahshua the Messiah, and he showed himself as Yahweh Elohim up here on this mount. And then he told, showed Moses how he created the whole creation by the tabernacle pattern or by himself. So here they go, they go up. Well, why don't you finish reading where you were? And keep me on, keep me on track, please. <clears throat> okay, a little bit louder. Exodus 24 and 13. Mm -hmm. And Moses rose up and his That's minister it. Joshua. Mm -hmm. And Moses went up into Mount into the mountain or the mount of Elohim. Right. And he's go ahead. And he said unto the elders, mm -hmm. tarry ye here for us until we come again. Mm -hmm. Until you, mm, uh, I'm sorry. Let me read that again. I apologize. <laughs> tarry, tarry ye here for us until we come again unto you. Mm -hmm. And behold, Aaron and her are with you. Mm -hmm. If any man have any manners matters to do, let him come unto them. Mm -hmm. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount, and the glory of Yahweh abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. <laughs> and the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. See, mystery after mystery after mystery is broken right here. Now he said six days, and then there's a colon. And then on the seventh. Now, to understand what happened in those six days, you have to go to Genesis. Because when they put the Bible together, they saw in the beginning, and they put that at the beginning. But that was not the beginning. Moses was the first man to receive the name of the Creator. And he was the first one that was shown how the creation was brought about by Yahweh Elohim, not just any kind of haphazard way. So you would have had to have the Exodus 
before the Genesis. So technically you would have had to know the story of Moses and how he went up here into this mountain and he had this vision and Yahweh showed him the creation for six days and on the seventh day he rested. So Genesis should really go right where that part of the Bible is. So here you have him up here in this mountain and he's having a vision of the creator for seven. Well, actually Moses was up here for 40 days, 40 days in this mount. Seven of it was about the seven days of creation. The next 33 about the tabernacle pattern. So this tabernacle pattern is extremely important in understanding something about Yahweh Elohim. So he goes up and he's, he's shown the creation. Now in all of my Bible learning days, I would never have thought that Moses is the one who had the vision of the Genesis. How would you even think that? So the only way we know anything about what's written in Genesis, <coughs> Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, did I say that right? <laughs> and what's the other book? Numbers. Oh, I forgot about the numbers. Okay. Is because Moses had a vision and he wrote the first five books of the Bible. And he didn't think them up on his own. Yahweh Elohim gave Moses a vision of himself and showed him how he created this whole universe or this, uh, the creation by the tabernacle pattern, which is an explanation of who he is. So whew, that being said, so here we have Peter, James, and John, and 70 chosen. And when they were up here on this mount, <clears throat> and I think I want you to get that for me too, because there's uh, quite a bit of information in there. Is Matthew 17 and 1? Yeah, it says Matthew 17, 1 through 13 here on the charts. Isn't it nice? You don't have to think about it. It's written right up here. <laughs> Matthew 17 and 1. Yeah, let's start there. And after six days. Oh boy, after six days, okay. Yahshua taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother. Peter, James, and John, James's brother, read. And John, his brother, mm -hmm. and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. Now they bring them up into a high mo mountain apart. Now what does that show you over here? You have Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, who were two brothers, and he takes them up on a mountain. Okay, read. And was transfigured before them, mm -hmm. and his face did shine in the sun, I'm sorry, as the sun, and the raiment was white, as the light. Okay, now that gives you, cause he's fulfilling here. He took Peter, James, and John up on the mount and then he transfigured, or in other words, he took off that flesh. And what they saw, like it says, um, this is Yah, um, how does it go? In his brill, in his- The body of heaven in his clearness. Yeah, the body of heaven in his clearness. And if you look up clearness, it means brightness or brilliance. So here you see him taking off that flesh or showing them who he is, how brilliant and how he outshone the sun or read it. Don't let me start paraphrasing. Read that again for me. <clears throat> I'm going to go 17 and 2. Okay. Okay. And was transfigured before them. Mm-hmm. And his face did shine as the sun. And his face did shine as the sun, but he was the sun. Read. And his raiment was white mm -hmm. as the light. White as the light, or he was glory. It was a glorified body. Certainly, they didn't see him walk up like that. But once he transfigured, then he showed who he was, how brilliant of a body that this was here on this mount. Now, um, see Peter. Oh, the other thing too is, well, just keep reading. They'll talk about Moses and Elijah or Moses and John. 
And behold, there appeared unto them mm -hmm. Moses, Moses and Elias and Elijah talking with him, talking with Yahshua. Read. Then answered Peter and said unto Yahshua, mm -hmm. Master, <laughs> it is good for <laughs> us to be here. Now listen to Peter. Remember, Yahshua told Peter, get behind me, Satan. Now, there would have never have been a way that I would have thought that Peter had the devil in him because he was one of the holy men in my mind that walked with Yahshua mm -hmm. the Messiah. Go ahead and read. If thou wilt, mm -hmm. let us make here three tabernacles. Now, here's Peter talking about let us make three tabernacles. Who told you we needed three tabernacles? Peter, go ahead and read. <clears throat> one for thee. Oh, one for you. Yes. And and one for Moses. And one for Moses. And one for Elias. One for Elias. Now look what happens. Read. While he yet spake, mm -hmm. behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Mm -hmm. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, mm -hmm. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. This is my beloved son, Yahshua, in whom I am well pleased. Now, you know... Um, there's a lot of things going on in the world that are just horrible or horrific, as we might say. And a lot of it is spiritual. There is a spiritual warfare going on, and we just need to be aware and always keep our eye on Yahshua the Messiah. Um, let's get Acts 4 and start at 10. I never thought that, um, you know, when we first came in the class, how important the name of Yahshua would be, the name of Yahweh, the title Elohim. There are um, people that when they speak, they can't even use this name of Elohim. They use God. They don't even use the name of Yahshua at all. Yahweh is used very seldom. So that was one of the first things that um, Dr. Kinley, well, it wasn't the first thing because it took him a while before he, he brought forth the name of Yahshua. But once he brought forth that name of Yahshua, he did not waver. He did not say that he was a savior. In fact, he said the opposite. He said, I am not your savior, child. Don't look at me. And all through time, you will see, as soon as Yahshua the Messiah raised from the dead, there was an effort made to cover up his name or to cover up the fact that he rose from the dead. So it hasn't changed. Everything that happened back there is still happening right down here today. So go ahead and read. Acts 4 and 10. Mm -hmm. Be it known unto you all. Be it known unto you all. Read. And to all the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. That by the name of Yahshua the Messiah. That of by the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Read. Of Nazareth. Of Nazareth. Whom ye crucified. Whom you crucified. Whom Yahweh raised from the dead. And Yahweh raised him from the dead. Even by him does this man stand before you whole. Because they had healed a man. Go ahead and read. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, mm -hmm. which is become the head of the corner. Mm -hmm. Neither is there salvation in any other. Now, listen, I know we've gone through this and our class probably understands this, but neither is there salvation in any other. You know, when you go ahead and finish it up, for there is none other name under heaven. There is none. N-O, nada, zilch, zero, nada. There is no other. No, it's such an easy word. There's only two letters. No. And it, when kids are around two years old, that's all they do. No, no, no. It's a real easy concept. There is no other name. Read. Um, sorry, I lost <laughs> I knew my spot. That one mixed you up. <laughs> For there is none other name under heaven <laughs> given among men mm -hmm. whereby we must be saved. Given among men whereby we must be saved. Read. Is there any more? Mm -mm. That's it. Okay. 
because <clears throat> I, I know we say saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And it's funny that it's used. There's no other name given among men. Is that one of the aims given among men whereby we must be saved? Ninth aim? Yes, read that for me, please. To make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Read it again. I'm going to stop you. <clears throat> to make known that Yahweh. To make known that Yahweh, read. From the beginning. Right from the beginning, before or, the creation, read. Ordained. Ordained. There is. Now, what does ordained mean? Look up ordained. Why don't you look up ordained and you keep going, Danielle. Ordained. Mm -hmm. There is no other name mm -hmm. given among men mm -hmm. whereby man can be saved. Mm -hmm. Saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. I thought it was interesting that instead of saying except the name of Yahshua, he used saving the name of Yahshua. So I haven't checked into that or to find out what that word saving, if, if you got something, just do it. But go ahead and, and read, Mariah, that, that other definition for me, please. <clears throat> Ordain. Ordain. A decree of something officially. A decree of something officially. So ordain. And you know when Dr. Kinley put these aims together, he was very careful on the words that he chose. So it's important. So he ordained right from the beginning that you couldn't be saved by any other name. And I know that <clears throat> might be, um, we go over that, but please let's keep going over it and never let it slip. You got something? Determine. Um, oh. Anwar, did you have something? Okay. All right. <clears throat> I know I'm like, ugh, you know, I <laughs> feel like I came out of the dreary wilderness, but um, <laughs> there was a, um, a member in our class that I saw this weekend who used to sing this song and it went, don't you be deceived. Don't you be deceived. Don't you listen to the devil, no. <laughs> and this person flipped. That's all I can say, they flipped. <clears throat> But they used to sing, don't you be deceived. Don't you listen to the devil, no. And what you doing, like Eve, listening to the devil. And that's all I can, I can, I can say about it is it's just listening to the devil. However, we have Yahshua. We're not going to forget him. And let's just hang on to what he has given us. It is most precious, most valuable for our soul for eternal life. With those words, I'll say hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Welsh. Our next speaker this evening will be Dr. Graciela Underwood. Sorry, I, got a, <clears throat> I had to get rid of a cough drop. 
I thoroughly enjoyed the previous speaker, and to those of you who are watching this broadcast uh, sitting at home, welcome. I know what it feels like to be out of class for a while, um, and it is so good to be here, you know, and I truly, <coughs> truly appreciate that Yahshua has made a way to have the gospel be preached so that those who are not able to attend are able to hear the truth regarding him. And um, the previous speaker was admonishing us that we are to hold fast to that which we learned from the beginning. And the scripture reading was Romans, um, the first chapter. Um, I'd like to go ahead and, and have Romans 1.16 read, please. <clears throat> and excuse me, excuse me for my clearing my throat. I'll try to minimize as much as possible. Romans 1 and 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the Messiah, for it is the power of Yahweh unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of Yahweh revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Okay, thank you. So, um, the other thing that Dr. Kinley has <clears throat> left us besides these charts is the transcripts of his lectures and um, the, the four volumes of the Elohim textbook and the various pamphlets that members uh, contributed to um, that covered various subjects that are all part of that divine vision and divine revelation that the founder received direct from Yahweh. And we, as was stated, we're not going to back off from pointing out who Yahweh gave the vision to, but we're going to let you know it was a given vision by Yahweh because we know ultimately he is the source, the substance and limits and bounds of everything. And it is he himself who came as and to the shape and form is Yahweh Elohim, as she was letting us know, and that superincorporeal form, and that he defined himself by this tabernacle pattern in explaining himself to Moses and to John and to Dr. Kinley. And this tabernacle pattern, we've come to know, has a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. And we have it on the various charts. Uh, I had a very brief conversation with someone who has been in this room, but they weren't in this room for the purpose of attending a lecture by our, by our school. Um, but they were in this room because they happened to be here for another meeting of sorts. And they had seen the charts, and their, their reaction was the way my reaction when I first saw them. It's all very confusing, but it appears to be religious. So they can recognize that it has something to do with knowing something about God, but they don't know what it all means. So for those who are viewing and have never seen the charts, sometimes we do go back and explain what the charts are. And sometimes we'll be pointing at things and you may not know why we're pointing. But we know that there's scriptures on these charts as well as labels, but that it's all part of that divine vision and revelation and that they are organized in a fashion to explain to us the things that are in our Bible, okay? as well as in the creation. So going back to this tabernacle pattern, most holy place, holy place, core roundabout, I wanted to point out that this chart also has the most holy place, holy place, core roundabout illustrated here, as well as here showing you your body, most holy place, holy place, core roundabout. And even when you don't recognize it, it the most holy place, holy place, core roundabout is here on this ages and dispensations chart and we pointed out to you in the sense that we let you know that there were uh, ages in timelessness, ages in time, and then there will be ages again in eternity or in timelessness. So in that most holy place, holy place, called roundabout. Here with the creator imaged by his creation, you see that there are this image right here of most holy place, holy place, called roundabout. And then there are other um, plates here that are labeled migration, letting you know about the greater and more perfect tabernacle um, that Yahweh built and not man, 
in showing you this migratory pattern with regard to uh, Egypt being like unto that core roundabout, and then the wilderness of Sinai likened unto that holy place, and then Canaan's land likened unto that most holy place. The atom letting you know that proton, neutron, and electron. And for me personally, as anyone who's had any science at all, when you heard about the most holy place, holy place, and then the court going round about the most holy place and holy place, because these were housed together, and then they told you, well, guess what? You've got your proton and a neutron, and then you've got these electrons that go round about. You got chills. Because everything that's matter is consisting of atoms in our experience. Okay? And then those cells, those living cells, having um, the nucleus, the nucleus, and then the cell body, that also shows most holy place, holy place, and core roundabout. And then they tell you about metamorphosis. Well, you know what? Yahweh's operating by a pattern or plan of salvation. Let's get 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And we find out that even the seasons, I'm going to point to this one right here, that they're showing something about his purpose, pattern, or plan of salvation, just like this butterfly is. Go ahead and read. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the glad tidings which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, mm -hmm. by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you. And that's what the previous speaker was admonishing us. Keep it in memory. Go ahead, please. Unless ye have believed in vain. Mm -hmm. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Mm -hmm. How that Yahshua died for our sins according to the scriptures, mm -hmm. and that he was buried, mm -hmm. and that he rose again the third day mm -hmm. according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Kepha, then by the twelve. After that, he was seen by more than 500 brethren at once. Okay, now, <clears throat> that right there is telling us about the death, the burial, the resurrection. On the third day, all of those things, according to the scriptures of Yahshua Messiah. Now, what are the scriptures? I had to learn that here. Every one of us who's been through these doors and have sat down found out that we did not understand what the scriptures were. Even if we went to church uh, regularly on Sunday, thinking that we were hearing the, the priest or the minister going over a scripture, we didn't realize what the scriptures really were. Because during the time that the Messiah walked the earth plain, there weren't the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Romans, and the epistles and all that. There wasn't in existence. What he was coming to fulfill was what was written by Moses, those first five books, and then all those prophets, the next 34 books of your Bible. Those, things, those are the writings that were in existence and known as the scriptures. So he was doing what was written of him in there. So, Going back to this metamorphosis of, this would be particularly the monarch butterfly, monarch being uh, related to a king or a kingship, and we know that Yahshua is indeed the king of kings. We have here the egg, the larva, the pupa, and then <coughs> you have, oh, I'll put it right here. Then you have it, the monarch in its full glory. The form that it has here is not the form that it has here. When it comes out of that egg, it has been laid on its food source, and it is bound to that food source and eating. That's its whole purpose is just to eat, okay? Then it comes into the stage where it has to wrap itself up, I'll put it that way, and while it's in that stage, it is changing. And it's changing, it's, it's, it's no longer going to exist the way it did before. It's going to be existing now in a different state than it was when it was earthbound. It's able to not only um, fly, but it's going to be eating in a different way. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that relate to the gospel of Yash Messiah? Well, the previous speaker was talking about uh, the difference between uh, Adam and Eve when they were in the Garden of Eden and then after they had uh, fallen from grace, I'll put it that way, that they, they looked at themselves and they were ashamed, okay? 
They were, they were now carnally minded. They were no longer spiritually minded. So now their thoughts were only carnal. So they're like this state right here, only thinking about what's going on right close next to them. And we were like that. We didn't realize that there was something else to this earth plane besides work, family, love, relationships, etc. We didn't recognize that Yahweh had put his fingerprints all over our lives. His purpose, pattern, and plan was in existence and that our lives were going according to it. And we didn't recognize that we were going through a death, a burial, a resurrection, and an ascension. A death, a burial, a resurrection, and an ascension on a continual basis. But when we came in here and started to hear the gospel of the Yahshua Messiah and believe that Yahshua Messiah is the only means of salvation of our souls, and we began to hear the gospel preached in its utter simplicity, now our thoughts are different. When we see things, we look at it and we say to ourselves, hmm, what does that tell me about Yahweh? Yahshua, explain this to me. We ask questions regarding how he is existing and how he's operating in this earth plane. And he actually answers us. For instance, the seasons. We talked about the fact that there's a death. Well, right here, the fall, that shows a death. We talked about a burial. Winter, that shows a burial. Spring shows a resurrection and summer shows an ascension. Fall in the sense that, that uh, not only the trees, but all of the plant life, they're gonna go into a dormancy. They're no longer gonna be producing that life in the sense that we know of it, okay? Winter, that season, you have got to put something on to keep yourself warmer. Uh, you just have to. When you go to bed, you're putting on a little bit more covers. You're gonna be covering yourself up. If it's raining, you're going to be covering yourself up. If it's snowing, you're going to be covering yourself up. That's winter. Then spring, now you're starting to shed a little bit because you realize, I don't need to be covered up as much. But you're not the only one who's changing. You've got those plants now resurrecting out of the ground. New plants, new growth, seeds that were buried are now starting to sprout. The trees are now starting to bud. In summer, now you talk about fruition. There's going to be fruit on the trees. Now, with regard to the gospel of Yash Messiah, the same thing has to happen with you. You come in here and you start to learn about Yash Messiah, and you're going to be learning about the things that he has, and your soul is going to be edified by those things. You're going to be going through death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and you'll start to recognize that's what's happening, and you'll realize that because Yash Messiah is the resurrection, You'll be calling on him and knowing that he will respond. You won't just be guessing or praying to Jesus anymore and wondering whether or not he's there. You'll know that he is here with you because he's never really left. I'll put it that way. Then you've got here the universe. This also goes by the tabernacle pattern. And the way that these plants are arranged is showing forth that um, method of uh, correlating it to that pattern. We have a whole pamphlet on that. Then man, you've got here uh, the various systems of man and their uh, way that they're organized here to show forth that this relationship here is similar to the relationship we have here with Elohim in that Elohim's nine divine ma major attributes being divine intelligence, that it crowns divine wisdom and divine knowledge, that the, his divine beauty crowns divine love and divine justice, and that his divine foundation crowns divine power and divine strength. Those are his nine divine major attributes. Now, we always like to explain that Yahweh is not just intelligent. I mean, you, you meet smart people. You hear about smart people. We've got some smart people in here. <laughs> not including myself, sorry. <laughs> but if you've got any intelligence, you got it from Yahweh. Because he's the source, he's the substance, he's the limits and bounds of everything. Now, if he didn't give you as much as somebody else, hey, there's a reason for that. It's all part of his purpose, pattern, or plan. Maybe he gave you a little bit more love for your brethren. Maybe he gave you a little bit more beauty. 
whatever reason, he gave it to you for a reason. Just keep that in mind. So over here with man, you've got the nervous system that crowns the reproductive and the endocrine system. You've got the respiratory system that crowns the circulatory and the excretory system. Then you've got the digestive system that crowns the muscular and skeletal system. Those nine major systems, okay? Showing you that there is a correlation between what's happening here and here. You could, you could go to the Elohim textbook, the third volume, and it would go into some detail. Then you have here death, burial, resurrection, ascension. Again, showing you Yahshua Messiah, as we were talking about in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that it's his death, and it's his burial, and then it's his resurrection that counts for the salvation of your soul. Now, I'm going to come over here briefly to this chart also to show you that we do have that tabernacle pattern on this chart. We actually have it over here on this side, as well as over here on this side. Now, this chart up here says vision, and it's got arrows. It goes from the word vision and points to revelation, but it also goes from the word vision and points to delusion. You'll see that this side is painted with the background of white, and this side is painted with the background of very dark. Basically letting you know that there's a difference between the light and the dark. Whether or not you're in the dark or whether you're in the light, let's go ahead and get <clears throat> Isaiah 8 and 20. Because over here where it says revelation, the revelation that we are to have is the revelation of Yash the Messiah, as it says in Revelation, the first chapter that that's who is supposed to be revealed unto us. And he is the life, he is uh, host, righteousness, healer, provider, banner, shepherd, Sabbath. Go ahead, please. Isaiah 8 and 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. And John 1 and 1, and 1, 1 through 4 and then 14. I'll John, hold it for a moment. Because... <clears throat> I said that Yahshua, he is the light, and he himself declared that he is the light of the world. Okay, go ahead, please. John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with Yahweh, and the word was Yahweh. Mm -hmm. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. Okay, so you see that word life right there? That's what you want. This life that you have here is temporal. What you really want is eternal life. And Yahshua is the only one who can give it to you. Over here, what you have, if you don't have Yahshua, is death. And this right here, this illustration is to let you know that there is one who has... Um, I want to do, let's see, okay. He's the father of lies. Satan, Lucifer, or the devil. He declared in Isaiah 14, 14, which we will not get, I will be like the Most High. He is the son of perdition, and he's got false prophets. Those that you listen to who don't really have um, the light in them, they don't go according to the law and the testimony to show you Yahshua Messiah. They're those false prophets. They're the ones who are saying that this is the way to eternal life, and actually, it's the way to destruction, where iniquity abounds. 666 is the mark of the beast. It's a delusion. And Satan is indeed the accuser of the brethren. He's a beast. He's a liar. He's a man of sin. He's a murderer. He's that anointed cherub. He's the god of this world. Now, I never, before coming here, I never thought that there was a god of this world that was this guy. I, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize it, and it was brought to my attention, Revelation, the um, 12th chapter, 7th verse, I believe. Mm -hmm. Well, pick it up and then go ahead down. Okay. Um, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Mm -hmm. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Okay, but go down to 14, because I didn't want you to do that either. John 1, 14. Because okay. this is talking about letting you know, again, that there's one spirit, Yahweh, who is also Yahweh Elohim, who is also Yash the Messiah. Go ahead, please. John 1 and 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, mm -hmm. and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you. Okay. Revelation. 
Revelation 12 and 7. Mm -hmm. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Mm -hmm. and See, the, that's another title that he has. Go ahead. And the dragon fought and his angels mm -hmm. and prevailed not. Neither was there a place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Mm -hmm. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels went, were cast out with him. So it says he was cast out into the earth. He's in that <coughs> ethereal darkness that, he was in that ethereal darkness that surrounded the unfinished earth. So he's been here since we even existed on the earth plane. And he was waiting to inhabit those bodies, okay? So <clears throat> going back to the tabernacle pattern and letting you know that it's on these charts, I'm coming back to this chart and letting you know that she was pointing out how, how that this side could show you the fulfillment on this side. But right here in the middle is that migratory pattern, okay? Right here, we point down here because this is referring to Egypt, uh, known as the court roundabout or that outer court. We let you know also with regard to Exodus, the 12th chapter, where we explain about that. When we go to uh, 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, we, we point here also. And then here, this is the wilderness of Sinai, which is also known as the holy place. And you see here right in the middle, that tabernacle that Moses was instructed to build exactly like the one that he showed was shown in the mount. And then here, this is Canaan's land, the promised land, and it's referred to as the most holy place. And you see right here, okay, on top of Mount Zion, a tabernacle, and then here on top of Mount Moriah, a temple. Now, over here, I'm gonna point out this ark. This is Noah's ark. Now, why am I pointing these things out? Because I'm reminded that it was pointed out to me how that, like I said, everything goes according to this tabernacle pattern, most holy place, holy place, court roundabout that even Noah's ark was threefold, showing forth Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. These three are one, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, in that it had an upper deck, a middle deck, and a lower deck, yet it was just one ark, okay? So that would be as a man standing. And then here, this tabernacle uh, would be as a man laying down his life. And then that this temple, it also was threefold in that it had a an oracle, a sanctuary, and a porch, and it was as a man sitting on his throne. That man that we're referring to is Yahweh, Elohim, or Yahshua, okay? So then over here, you see on this side, Yahshua, death, burial, resurrection, <coughs> Pentecost. And you see here on his resurrection that many of the sons rose with him. So when we come to this chart, pattern or plan of salvation, which uh, several of our speakers have gone through recently, as well as the children, we have three portions to this chart. This upper portion here, which shows you uh, Yahweh Elohim uh, when he's coming out and moving. And then he has those days where you have the dark, the light, the dark, the light, the dark, the light, those three days and three nights, okay? Showing you his purpose from beginning to end, that he is going to establish a new earth where we'll have the kingdom of Elohim, the new heaven, and eternity, and he will be surrounded by those who believe in Yahshua Messiah. Then we have this section here, and then this section here. The titles of the plates are up here in white, transgression for this plate, Noah preparation entering the ark for this plate, Abraham and King Melchizedek for this plate, migratory pattern for this plate, interior pattern for this plate, Baptism and ministry for this plate. See 1 John 5, 7 through 8, or the unity of the Spirit for this plate right here. And then we move down here to show you that it's entitled Crucifixion, Burial, Resurrection, and Ascension for this plate. Pentecost for this plate. Persecution for this plate. Gentile conversion for this plate. Apostasy for this plate. Eschatology for this plate. And then Omega, Sanctum of Sanctorums. Now, each of these plates are threefold. And they're threefold to show you most holy place, holy place, court roundabout. But they also, particularly on this chart, 
we point out those um, either the principles of death, burial, resurrection, and ascension, basically, or we also show you the witnesses of blood, water, spirit. And I'd like to go ahead and get that scripture first. Thank you, Moran. First John 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood. And these three agree in one. Okay, so that's basically what's here on this plate. You've got the bloodline, the water line, and the spirit line that you're going to see when the children come up here and they point out the blood. And they point specifically here to this serpent. And this is in the transgression plate that they're pointing. And then when they come up here and they point to this section right here, what they're pointing to is the blood that is on the people's heads. Let's go ahead and get Ezekiel 33, 4 through 6. And then when they go to Abraham and King Melchizedek, they point over here to the a ram that was caught in the thickets, which Dr. Kinley also referred to Isaac as being that blood in one of his transcripts. The migratory pattern, they point over here because of the blood that's placed on the doors. Just let me know when you have it. And then the interior pattern, this is what everything is going by. In that, we haven't explained this to you yet, but the purpose pattern of plan of, of salvation that Yahweh has expressed by this tabernacle pattern to show forth his son included that there was going to be um, an offering, a sin offering made, and that, the, that Yahshua was going to be the ultimate lamb of Yahweh to cover all sin. But the children of Israel, when they were under those carnal ordinances, they had to offer up, according to the law, animals. And this is where they would offer them up to. And there was blood placed on the four horns of this altar. So there's a principle, or excuse me, those witnesses of blood as well as a principle of a death. Then here for this uh, vessel, the brazen labor, there was that uh, principle of an immersion or a burial and that water being that witness there. And then the, uh, here at the door is where, uh, at about the age of 30, that the high priest was anointed there's another vessel involved here, that cup of holy anointing oil that he was anointed with for the express purpose that he was, it was a type of a quickening or spirit so that he could officiate properly and in order in this tabernacle that Moses was admonished to make exactly like the one that he saw in the mount. So you know that that high priest better do exactly as he was instructed in this tabernacle. So we were showing you blood, and then we came here and we asked for a scripture. Let's go ahead and get Ezekiel, please. Ezekiel 33 and 4. Whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, mm -hmm. if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, mm -hmm. he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. See, Yahweh will hold that watchman accountable if he doesn't warn the people. So we do want to warn you that Yahweh is truly giving us an opportunity to know him as Yash Messiah, and that that is our only, only means of salvation. So to heed the warning and to go ahead and follow your heart in Yash Messiah and study the things that he asks you to look at regarding proving to yourself that he, Yahweh, exists and that he's your Elohim and your Savior, okay? So, okay, so going back here, uh, we told you about the blood, the water, and the spirit, letting you know that there's a bloodline, blood, 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 blood. But then we come here and letting you know that it still continues in that since we said that he's that lamb of Yahweh, and it's only his blood, nobody else's, that Yahweh will find acceptable, okay? So then with the water, well, yes, he has to follow 
uh, what's written of him in the Law and the Prophets, we said. So he had to, John 1, 29 through 32, he, and this would also go back to Matthew, the third chapter, but we're not going to get that, but we're going to go ahead and let you know that Yahshua had to submit himself to being water baptized, not to set a physical example, okay? And this was something I read recently with regard to uh, a transcript, a reminder that, you know, the Gentiles are grafted in, they're not planted. <laughs> so... The Jews, when they were being water baptized, it was unto repentance. Okay? That's a whole different reason. You cannot get water baptized today for salvation. That's the point. Go ahead, please, with John. John 1 and 29. The next day John seeth Yahshua coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh, which taketh away the sin of the world. Mm -hmm. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man who is preferred before me, mm -hmm. for he was before me. Now, how is that? He was before me. Well, <clears throat> that's a whole story that you find out when you come here. I mean, I don't know about you, but I didn't think about Jesus being before John the Baptist. And I find out now that Yahshua, you know, he didn't have a physical father. He didn't have a physical mother. It didn't take any of Joseph's substance or Mary's substance for him to be. He was placed in that womb. Okay? So that's a whole story, too. All right. So did I let you finish? Um. So, yep. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore, am I come immersing with water. Okay, so that's why he was doing what he was doing, okay? All right, so coming down here, we also can show you that blood line here, that water line here, and the spirit line. <clears throat> we let you know that uh, uh, John 19th chapter, third, 30th, Verse, I guess. John 19 and 30. You got it? Go ahead. Go ahead. When Yahshua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished, and bowed his head mm -hmm. and expired. Mm -hmm. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for the Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Mm -hmm. Then came the soldiers and broke the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. Mm -hmm. But when they had came to Yahshua and saw that he was dead already, they broke not his legs. Mm -hmm. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. Now, it's through this gospel, this divine vision and revelation that I can now see that there's blood, water, spirit mentioned there. Because he'd already given up the ghost and he was pierced in the side and out came blood and water. Okay? That's how I know this. I wouldn't have known it otherwise. Okay? Here with Pentecost, now I know that because of the, on the day of Pentecost, it's brought back to their remembrance that the, they were walking with the Messiah. You know, do you ever have, have you ever had a best friend that you spent a lot of time with and you got to know what colors they liked, what foods they, they, they liked, all that stuff? You know, whether or not they were in, in or out with somebody else. Well, they spent all that time with him, and yet even though he told them that he had to soon die, they didn't understand. But now, on the day of Pentecost, they understand things such as the Passover, when, he, when he's talking about taking that cup, he's not talking about the, what's in the cup. He's talking about he's that cup, that it's his blood, okay? And when he's washing their feet, they realize that what he's referring to is that he's preparing them to go out and that it's all done in fulfillment, okay? So these things of blood and water, and like I said, the Spirit being the Holy Spirit, those things are things that now they can see and we can see too. 
the persecution, okay, you've got, uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, you've got the death. This is Stephen, who's been stoned. And he was giving a testimony of Yahshua Messiah, okay? So there's the blood. And then the Ethiopian eunuch that requested to be baptized. And he was, he was baptized by Philip the deacon. And there's a whole story about that, why, why that's not any evidence for water baptism in this age. Okay, so that's blood and that's water. And again, it was the Holy Spirit that, uh, with the gospel being preached at Jerusalem and in the four corners. So there's, there's a whole story showing you blood, water, spirit. Okay, as well as 40, which I haven't even mentioned in each one of these plates, which over here now we have uh, James uh, being killed, that being the blood, and then the water here, we, we refer to letting you know that now Peter the Apostle, he's been given a vision, but Cornelius had also been given a vision, and Cornelius was instructed to go get Peter to come to Cornelius' house, so he has that happen, and Peter, has been given a vision to go, so he, then he goes. And when he gets there, he talks about Yash the Messiah to them. These are Gentiles that he's talking to. And the Holy Spirit fell on them. Okay, let's go ahead and get that specifically. Would that be the 10 chapter? But I want exactly where he speaks and it falls on them. So you got, like I said, the blood with regard to that death. The water in that, he called for water. But in the 11th chapter, you find out when he's talking to, and explaining himself as to why he went, even went to the Gentiles, he says he remembered, then remembered I. Who brought it back to his remembrance? It was the Holy Spirit, because Yash the Messiah, the Holy Spirit said he would bring everything back to the remembrance whatsoever he had shown them. And so he's letting them know, no, they don't need to be planted in water. They are grafted in. So, um, okay, go ahead, please read um, Acts. Acts 10 and 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Spirit fell on them, which heard the word. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay, and like I said, you'd have to go to Acts the 11th chapter for the other part of that. Um, so then going to apostasy. Apostasy, meaning a falling away from what one believed. So, mind you, we have this time period of after Yahshua's death, his burial, his resurrection, and that outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There were believers, okay? But there was also, as we said, a persecution that occurred. They were persecuted first by the Jews who didn't believe, and then later on, it was also the rulers who were pagan rulers who were also persecuting the believers, okay? So when you come to this apostasy, there's been, between that time and this time, there has been many ways where the true gospel of Yash Messiah has gotten perverted and changed and people have put on their own ideas as to what it is. Even the Jewish nation has changed with regard to, you don't see them offering up lamb uh, roasted herbs or bitter herbs and uh, roasted lamb, bitter herbs and, and unleavened bread at Passover. So he, here you have here that there are those who think that they can, uh, through saying words and various ceremonies, uh, now feed you the blood of your Savior. And they think that through those carnal ordinances now they can put you in the water and you can be saved. And that spirit that they're, that, that they're following is, as I said, that's a false prophecy. prophets. They're under that delusion of Satan, that serpent, okay, uh, the demons, um, the devil. That's what's going on there, okay? But there is a way out of that. And that's why we continue to admonish you and encourage you to do all you can, to learn all you can, because Yahshua, he is the way out of that mess. He is the truth. He is the life. He is the only means of salvation. So when you come here to eschatology, 
and that referring to the study of last things. What are those last things that are most important to your soul? Immortality? Heaven? Hell? Death? All that stuff. Okay? So there's blood here and water here also with regard to you've got here that blood moon and then you've got that um, lake of fire. But what you really want is you want to be with the spirit of Yash Masai in the body of Yash Masai. You don't want to be in that lake. That's not where you want to be. Now, what, what may be difficult for us as humans to remember is that we're so often dealing with things on this earth plane that we don't think about the fact that we have a soul, but we are spirit, soul, and body. And our soul can feel. Our soul can be in torment. That would be an eternal state for those who do not obey the gospel of Yash the Messiah. An eternal, non-ending state of existence. But for the believers who believe in Yash the Messiah, uh, is it Romans the 17th chapter of the kingdom? That's going to be a whole different situation because now we're talking about a new heaven and a new earth. We're not talking about a physical new earth because he said this is all going to be done away with. And Yahweh is spirit. Yahshua is spirit. Your souls are going to be in a spiritual existence. Um, and if you happen to find uh, about... I, I, yeah, I, I'm not sure what's that. I just. Romans 14 and 17. Thank you. The only number I remember is 17. I never remember the other number. <laughs> For the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that's what the kingdom is. One more time. We're going to move over to this chart. Um, 14 and 17. For the yep, it's right here. Now I know. <laughs> Go ahead. For the kingdom of Yahweh is not eating and drinking, but righteousness it's and... It's righteousness. And peace. And peace. And joy. And joy. In the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. Righteousness. Peace. And joy. Now, whatever joy you feel on this earth plane is just a smidgen, and I, I don't even know if it can, you can call it a smidgen, of what you would experience in that heavenly state. And if you've heard, because he says, my sheep hear my voice, if you've heard Yahshua's voice, and it's sweet to your ears, you know that that's the state that you'll be in. Well, you'll be in a state learning in the ages to come, and you'll be thankful for all that you've learned now. So this chart right here, which shows you the, um, what the, the uh, children of Israel were under, that Old Testament, the carnal ordinances, and it lists all those things, that it was indeed fulfilled, and it gives you the scripture. It was nailed to the cross. It gives you lots of scriptures and shows you, you know, Yahshua Messiah, here on the cross, showing that it was the end. He said he finished it. We read that, okay? Then over here it says, New Testament is written in the heart or mind. It gives you scriptures, and it talks about the kingdom of Yahshua. Now, again, it's the kingdom of Yahshua. It's not Dr. Kinley's kingdom. It's not a man's kingdom. It's the kingdom of Yahshua. And Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. And we will be offering them spiritual sacrifices, and we are under the law of the Spirit. All this, because if the New Testament is written in your heart or mind, that's what's happening now. It's happening now, and it's important to happen now. So you see down here, you see that, and this was mentioned um, partly in, in the scripture reading, with regard to pointing out uh, the Jews and the Gentiles, as well as the things we've been reading, in that those who believe in Yahshua, they're precious to him, as opposed to those who do not, who will end up in the lake of fire. Okay. 
And this other chart, which we have a few minutes for, um, I was showing you about the fact that things go according to the pattern so that there is a one, two, three aspect to everything, okay? Even here, one, two, three, uh, before, you know, during, and an after, okay? And showing you that the, these plates are similar to the plates there in that you have the uh, Edenic transgression plate. You have here the flood, the Tower of Babel, the Abrahamic promise, the Mosaic law. This serpent here representing a, a Lucifer, okay? And then here, that Pentecost, and then the Gentiles, with this timeline showing you the promise has been fulfilled, okay? First with the Jews, and then with the Gentiles. That's what's happening down here. So now, when we come to this particular chart, this chart actually starts here on this side, which is the right side, and then ends up going to the left side. So we start here at the top, and here this says degeneration in the first atom. So this plate right here would be similar to other plates that you've seen on other charts, okay? So you have Adam and Eve here, and this angel happens to be Lucifer, the serpent, who appeared as a beautiful angel to her. He didn't appear as what he truly is, which is a demonic spirit, okay? This angel right here is not Lucifer. This happens to be the one who guarded the way with his flaming sword so they could enter not back into the garden after they were... <coughs> Uh, in that state. Uh, so Adam is driven out. And then down here, we have where Yahweh had declared that, he, that Adam was going to have to work by the sweat of his face, and that um, there, um, oh, Timothy, Timothy 3, whatever, about the childbearing. Uh, so it would be that they would be through childbearing, okay? So when you see the, up here, there is a serpent that's wrapped around this tree, and then you see in this plate where it's slithering, slithering on down, following, and then you see it here, big and red, it's, it's moving on across, and it's got here the stars. It's because it's letting you know that that old serpent, as was stated in Revelation uh, earlier, that he drew a third part of that innumerable company angels with him. Okay, and that's what that's representing. So if you have Timothy, oh. is it on the chart? Where? Which first chart? Well, this one says First Timothy two thirteen through fifteen. First Timothy two and thirteen. But we are bound to give thanks always to Yahweh for you, brother. That's. Yeah, it said First Timothy, but that's what I was wondering because I think it's fifteen. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold your hold the tradition. That's not it. Timothy, reading Thessalonians. Oh, okay. <laughs> First Timothy two and fifteen. Notwithstanding. She shall be saved in childbearing, yeah. if they continue in faith and in love and in holiness with severity. So okay, so that childbearing, that promise, is pointing to Yash the Messiah. He already had the solution, okay? But as I was stating earlier, this red serpent here that's moving on down, that's letting you know that he's had kingdoms, okay? Mystery Babylon, Media and Persia, Grisha, Pagan and Papal Rome, okay? And there's a whole lot of that. There's a whole story here with, in Daniel and in Revelation, letting you know about things that. Proving the existence and destruction of Satan. So he has been destroyed and his demons through the dispensations and ages. And how has that happened? Because the kingdom of Satan has been abolished and the kingdom of Yahweh has been restored through the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the ascension of Yahshua the Messiah. So there's regeneration in this second Adam, because that's Yahshua. Okay, so that's what this story is letting you know about. And then we come here to this last chart, for, for this purposes, that we refer to as the name chart, although it's a two-in-one chart. This first part up here, mostly with regard to the name, and then this right here, mostly in regards to the unity of the Spirit. Okay, but you see that the tabernacle is prominent here also showing forth Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit. One Spirit, but he's operating by a pattern or plan 
Okay, so he has three states of existence, two manifestations, but three states of existence. So that's just, like I said, there are other things that we have here, uh, but letting you know that there is a reason why we point where we point, but it's all for the main purpose of letting you know that Yahshua Messiah, he is the true savior of your soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Underwood. That brings a close to our session for this evening. Are there any comments or questions? Our next class meets Friday from 7 to 9 p.m., and we have a General Assembly meeting on Sunday, this Sunday. Our class will end at 1230. And let's all stand for the doxology. <laughs> Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both before all time, now, and forever. Let us all say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. state of its condition then you see it come to fruition that's a type of resurrection when you turn off the light and go to sleep at night bury your head beneath the covers arise in the morning oh that's just another type of resurrection so I know that it lives my redeemer lives I know tell me do you Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives, I know, he gave me all the proof. Yes, I know that he lives, my Redeemer lives, this I know. How about you? How about you? Israel ate that lamb, then left Egypt's land, to the Red Sea, old Pharaoh right behind them. Through divided waters, Yah delivered them on dry land. That's a type of resurrection Old Joseph was a dreamer His brothers did despise They put him in that hole For they sought to take his life Then he was lifted up By the merchants passing by That's a type of resurrection So I know that he lives My Redeemer lives This I know Tell me do you Yes I know that he lives My Redeemer lives Oh he lives all the proof. Yes, I know that he lives. My Redeemer lives. This I know. How about you? How about you? Abraham was faithful, took his son to sacrifice. Then Yahweh said, you please me, he don't have to take his life. Then he turned around to see the ram Yah did provide. That's a type of resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection.